When the user taps a book right here in Content View, we're going to present a new detail view with more information. That means the genre of the book and their brief review and more. We're also going to reuse our new rating view here and customize it a little bit so you can see exactly how flexible SwiftUI is. Now to make this screen more interesting, we're going to add some artwork here that represents each of the categories we have. Now I've picked out some artwork already from a site called Unsplash, unsplash.com, and I've placed it into a folder for you called Project 11 Files. These things here are the assets. You want to download these now if you haven't got them already. They're on github.com slash two straws slash hacking with Swift. Uh, grab those pictures, they're all there for you, and you want to copy them into your asset catalog. So let's go to here and drag all these pictures in. You'll see there's 2x and 3x for all pictures like that for all the categories we have. Now the Unsplash site is very, very friendly. It's got a license that lets us use pictures commercially or non-commercially with or without attribution, although attribution is appreciated. In this case, the pictures I've added are from Ryan Wallace, Eugene Traguba, Jamie Street, Alvano Serrano, Joao Silas, David Dilbert, and Casey Horner. You can get the originals from unsplash.com if you want. Now, make a new SwiftUI view. Command N. Choose SwiftUI view and name this thing Detail View. I'm going to give this thing an import for Swift data. And this thing needs only one property to work with, which is a book which it should show. So add that now. Let book be a book. Now, even just having that one property is enough to break our preview code down here. Um, and previously, that was easy to fix because we just set an example object in we made earlier. But with Swift data involved, things are messier. Train it, create a new example book here also means having a view context to create it inside. Now, this is the first time that it's actually tricky to use Swift data in this entire little tutorial series so far. This is the first time it's actually hard to do. And here, we've got to get things in exactly the right order in order for it to all work correctly. And so, in order to make a book object, we must first create a model object here. We have that model object here. We've got to make a model context for it to live inside. Then, that model context comes from having a model container. And if we make a model container, we don't actually want to store data anywhere. It's just a preview purpose here. So we're going to make a custom configuration for that to say, actually, just store your information in memory only. This means everything's temporary. When the preview stops, the memory's wiped, it's gone. It's not really stored. I know that sounds like a lot, but in practice, it's only a few lines of code. We're going to make our model container by hand and doing that using a new type called model configuration. Let's request that in memory, temporary storage. Once we have that, we can make our book object as normal, okay? Then send its detail view as normal, and then send the model container in as well. So, a preview code here, replace it with this. We'll do a do block, and say in here, let config be a new model configuration, and we'll do is stored in memory only is true. Do not actually write anything to disk here, it's just temporary. We can then make a new container out of that here using try model container for our book.self with configurations our config. And with that in place, it's now safe to make our example book. So I'll basically make a new book here with the regular initializer. So we'll say uh, test book, author, test author, genre is fantasy. Review, this was a great book. I really enjoyed it. Rating four. And now send back our detail view with a book of that example value with a model container being passed in using our container here, uh, model container, not model context. So don't do model container four, just do model container with your container inside it. And then catch and do return text failed to create preview with error localized description explaining why. So that is all the work required to get good previewing up with Swift data. And it's really strange because 
making a book here doesn't actually mention the model container or the model context or the model configuration anywhere. But it does matter. If you try and make one of these without a container being around, you will hit problems. Let's comment it out now. I know this last line here. I'll make it preview and you can see, bang, it's a big error crashing here. It's just really, really unhappy. Fatal error here, uh, can't handle it. So cannot find a currently active container, bang, not happy. Don't do that. Even though it doesn't reference it, it is behind the scenes. It's silently finding the container and the context behind the scenes. So you must make it before you make any model object. Okay. With that done, we can turn our attention to more interesting problems, namely designing the actual view itself. Now to start with, we're gonna place the category image and genre inside a Z stack. So we can place one on top of the other nicely. I've picked up some styling, I think looks okay, but of course you're welcome to experiment with styling as much as you want to, go ahead. All I'd say is, please make sure and keep your content inside a scroll view. It ensures our full review fits onto the screen no matter how long it is, or what device the user has, or whether they've changed their font size or whatever, it will fit no matter what. So this body property here, I'll say the scroll view. Inside there, I'll do a Z stack with alignment of bottom trailing. So bottom right corner and left to right languages. Then we'll do an image of our book genre, scaled to fit, make it resizable of course, helps. There we go. And then let's press play again on that actually. Uh, Book.genre uppercased. There you are, appearing slowly. Uh, and I'll say uh, with that one, we have our uh, font weight of black. It's down here somewhere, almost invisible against the background. Don't worry, we'll fix it in a second. Uh, we'll add a bit of padding around it. There we go. We'll add a foreground style of white. Getting there slowly. Add a background with a black opacity 0.75. Yeah. And then a clip shape of, let's do a capsule. And let's bring it in slightly using an offset modifier. We'll do, uh, bring it in X minus five, Y minus five, like so. Great, okay. So, that's our view. I'll now add some little modifiers to the scroll view down here. We'll say the nav title of uh, book.title. And then a nav bar title display mode of inline, and then critically a scroll bounce behavior of based on size. Don't let the scroll view bounce unless it actually needs to. There is stuff to bounce around, which is much nicer on uh, devices where the text fits just fine. Anyway, so the genre is down here in the bottom right corner uh, of our image with a, a background color, a bold font, and a little bit of padding to help it stand out nicely. Below this Z stack here, we're gonna add the author, the review, and the rating score here. Now we don't want users to be able to adjust the rating here. That's already done. And so we can use another constant binding here to say, no, that's your uh, fixed binding. It's in read-only mode effectively. Even better, because we use SF symbols to make the rating image, we can actually scale them up using a font modifier. Make the whole thing get bigger uh, smoothly. So we have better use of the space we actually have on the screen. And so below the Z stacks, like here, I'm gonna say that a text of book to author where the font of title, a foreground style of secondary, like that. Then there is a text of book to review with padding around it. Beautiful. And then our rating view here, and the rating is going to be a constant integer of the books, actually constant reason isn't it? Sorry, a rating of uh, book dot rating like that uh, in a font of large title. Boom, nice big chunky thing here. So that completes our detail view, which means we can now go back to content view over here. So if we range just slightly, boom, and add here a navigation destination to our list. Uh, saying when you're tapped, go somewhere. So I'll say there's a nav destination for book.self and destination is going to be, ugh, give you a training closure, please. Book in, detail view, book is book, like that. 
And now, hopefully, run the app again. We should be able to tap our little white fang book here. Boom, in it comes. There we go. Nice title, kid's picture, the author name, book name, and then a read-only version here. So I haven't done anything with the tour. It doesn't change at all when you press these things, uh, which is nice. So now any books you've entered, you can tap in to see this new detail view.